Hello, hello. We are live. And I am so excited for this conversation with Valerie Aston, who has helped me with my business in France. And I know that she is a wealth of information and you're going to get so much out of this conversation. So if you are joining live, where are you in the world? Are you joining from? Type that in the chat. And let's see what's going on. Is there a technical issue? We're having trouble streaming to Facebook. Okay. We'll keep trying. All right. Got it. technical side because I don't know. So. Yeah, well, we're streaming on YouTube, so we're we're go we're gonna keep going. Hi, Maria. Um, yes, Mississippi is in the house. All right, yeah. and you can hear me, obviously. So we are going to get started. I am so excited that Valerie has agreed to join me. She is. Um, of an expert in her field of helping people setting up businesses in France. And this is a really interesting way to be able to live in France. That is how I am here. I am on a profession liberal visa and um, I started my business here in France. And today we're going to talk about the five mistakes, missteps, misconceptions that expat, expat entrepreneurs freelancers make when they start a business in France. And to get started, I'm going to introduce myself, but I see that Pearl from Texas has joined also. Welcome, welcome. My name is Patricia Brooks. And seven years ago, I left my job and I moved to France on a sabbatical. And I didn't know what my next professional move was, but I knew I needed a break. And over the course of a couple of years, I decided that I wanted to start a business here in France to help women, other women like me, who were anxious to live in a foreign country, but who lack the confidence and courage to do it, find that and settle in a place so that they could finally start living and thriving in their dream country. And so that is who I am. That is what I do. Valerie. Welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, sure. So thank you for having me. I'm really pleased to be with you today, especially because we've known each other for a few years and you are the living proof of what we can do. Yes. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Barry Aston. Uh, I'm a business advisor and the founder of Stop Business in France. And basically, I advise English speakers who want to move to France and start freelancing. So I'm going to be helping them to prepare, create, and manage their French business so that they can focus on what they do best, which is to look after their customer, uh, develop their activity, and also enjoy the French lifestyle. Because when you come over, you also want to enjoy France. So it's a bit of all of this. Uh, and I'm based in Normandy, which is the northwest of France. So I'm close to the D-Day beach uh, and the Mont Saint-Michel. Yes, thank you for sharing all that. Yes, and I think it's important to recognize that the reason that you're moving to France, that you want to move to France, is so that you can have a life here, right? So you can feel um, have a little bit more um, relaxation, perhaps, than you have in your current country. So I think that is so important to uh, point out. Hi, Dion. Good uh, good morning to you. It's evening for us. <laughs> for us so you know we've been yes. working all day we're looking not so fresh but yes uh, we're a little frazzled <laughs> but we're here <laughs> we're here and so today we're going to talk about the five mistakes or misconceptions that expat freelancers or entrepreneurs in france have and i want to ask you valerie why did you decide to start a business like this one to help people with this yeah, so initially, um, so I'm French, I was working as a business advisor, but to French entrepreneurs. And I did this for 10 years. So mainly helping local businesses. Uh, and used to be people who were uh, changing their life, going from usually going from being employed 
too self-employed and had a dream of having one business. So I was doing a lot of working on the business idea, business plan, looking for the finances from the bank, and helping them work on and um, because my other half was English, I also had a lot of questions from our friends asking me. So whenever we had a dinner party, it was like, oh, Valerie, oh, that's what you're doing. How do I do this? How much taxes I'm going to pay also? Um, and so I started writing a few articles on this for the local press. Uh, there's uh, the, the Rendezvous, which was in Normandy, the Connection, which is still here in France. That's a nice uh, printed magazine for expats in France, a newspaper. Uh, and because I was writing those articles, I just got overloaded with more questions uh, about businesses in France. And at the time, I was on my third maternity leave. And in France, you get a lot of time for your third child. I had six months off. And my husband said, well, you're going to get bored. I know you. You're going to get bored. So I've done a blog for you and you can keep writing on this. And basically, so I started writing, getting more questions. And my daughter was born in September and January that year. A few months later, I thought, right, I've got to do a business because there's just so much demand. I can't do it for free or I would do this all year long. So I started a private blog where I was uh, answering questions where people joined for the year. And then I just added services, creating businesses, one-to-one -one advice, online courses, one-to-one -one coaching. And that developed to uh, what it is today. That was 15 years ago. Yes, yes. So you kind of fell into it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's when yeah, sometimes you fall into your business, you find a niche. And that, to me, that's definitely a niche because I'm really into the create freelancing and in France. Uh, but then there's enough demand to uh to keep you busy. So yeah, good, and good. And Mario says, wow, six months for maternity leave. Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um so with that said, people are interested in just learning more about, you know, what not to do as an entrepreneur. So why don't we just dive into the first tip or first misstep or misconception yeah. that entrepreneurs have? Yeah, so the first, yeah, <laughs> the first mistake is basically uh, to under uh, underestimate the time that is needed to prepare. Uh, and I think that's why it's interesting for us to talk together today because there's a business side and from your point of view, it's also the coaching side of preparing that transition to come to France. There's so many things to look at because you've got your personal life, your business plan, uh, your business vision, uh, and you're living a country. So you've got to get ready from leaving your country. What do you do with your house? How do you tell your friends? How do you tell your boss to preparing that move? And you might realize you might need a business visa that needs some work uh, to moving over. And so that takes some time. Uh, really that part of, uh, and I think when we talk together to having that vision of what your life could be, it's not just about the freelancing, it's the whole thing changing. Not only are you changing lifestyle, work but also country so the yeah. sooner you start working on this uh the better yeah so for me you know i started the business here in france while well, some of the the people that i work with they are in their current country so if they have a business idea that they can do that they can do uh, virtually potentially to get that up and running or get that going so that once they get here, that year time frame to, for me, I had it uh, with a pro uh, profession liberal visa, I had a year to make this, make the minimum French minimum wage, take some of that pressure off of you, get that up and running sooner rather than later. Is that is that the sort of thing that you're talking about in terms yeah. of underestimating the time that it takes? Yeah, I mean, I said that the as you said to when you decided you want to go over from the moment you think, okay, I'm I'm ready to go to France to preparing all of this might take six months to six to twelve months, but also for many people, um, some small decisions which seems not specifically difficult, if you haven't made them before you move to France, it becomes tricky. So, for instance, I have the example of a couple of my customers who moved over, but they haven't really decided where they wanted to stay. They decided to stay with France but it wasn't the final destination. Uh, and they've been traveling through France looking for the ideal location of where they want to live. But they, in a way, they're slowing down the integration because they keep, the, in their mind, they're still on the move physically, they're still on the move as to going to different places in France to find the ideal place. Well, if you made that decision before, as you okay, uh, the kind of environment I like is 
I like to live by the sea or I like to be by the mountain or I'm a town girl. I want to be in a big town and be able to meet people. That impacts, that starts impacting your choice. And when you've made that decision, you're one step, you're one step closer. And the next step also is, uh, in your case, uh, you were freelancing before. Some people might be freelancing, but other people, they haven't freelanced before. They're employee and they're thinking of dropping this to go into freelancing. Again, that's a major step because you have to, Think about what else could I be doing? So there are a lot of brainstorming. Am I freelancing into what I did before? Am, am I going for something which is more of a hobby or a leisure? How do I tell this to my boss? There's a lot of decision which, um, from my point of view, I think are very good to work with someone like you because he's getting ready. And I, I know not long ago we talked together and you said, well, there's a vision of the person you want to become and how do you get there? And uh, to me, there's a lot of work to do as well from a personal point of view, to prepare for this. Yeah, so there's the business aspect, there's the mindset aspect, and I think the, 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 there's the transitionary period as well. I think for me, getting, feeling like, oh, France is home to me, and I feel like I have um, a circle of friends or a network that I can count on, took a couple of years. So it's, it's not for the faint of heart or the impatient. <laughs> yeah. It takes a lot of long-term effort. Uh, and also that has an impact on, are you moving on your own? Um, are you moving with your other half as a family? Again, the support will be different depending on how you come over. I mean, uh, you came over on your own. That takes a lot of courage to keep yourself motivated, going over those hustles, and knowing that there will be some, it won't be always easy. But once you know what, what you want to do is okay. Well, I, yes, it's tough, but on my way, look at everything I've done. And many, many times, some of my customers, I say, well, well, look back six months down the line, you are in the US, you are in freelancing, you've landed, you've got your visa, you've got house rented. You know, just enjoy what you've achieved so far before you keep going, let's, let's keep running and go for the next bit. There's enjoy every step. Some of it is painful, but enjoy also the small wins that you have along the way. Uh, some of those major steps like visa, landing, getting a house. Yeah, yeah. So what questions do you have for Valerie or for me? Put them in the chat and we will entertain them as they come in. So underestimating the time it takes to set up the business, underestimating the time it takes to settle in and prepare yourself for this gargantuan change in your <laughs> life is the first one. What is a, a, another mistake or misstep that freelancers or entrepreneurs coming to France make? So there's also like um, something which is more, again, a mindset of feeling like you're wasting your time. Uh, you, you in the US, you're used to things going super fast. Uh, you go and create the business and you do this, you have it tomorrow, you go and open the bank account online. Uh, a lot of those things are going to take some time, especially, for instance, when you start looking at your visa application. To me, that's the foundation work. You're going to spend quite a bit of time to work on your strategy, uh, design what kind of services going to be, uh, which kind of services going to be providing, how much you're going to be uh, selling them for, who you would be working for. So all of this take a lot of time. Sometimes people say, oh, I'm going to just draft the business plan over the weekend. Well, it's pretty sure that's going to take longer because when you think about going to, into creating your business of freelancing, when you really start thinking about it, you say, okay, what do I do? Who would be my ideal customers? Who, which kind of services would I sell? Which kind of, what would be included in that? What would be the reselling price? What would be my competitors? So there's a lot of foundation work that you are actually doing when you're at home, especially if you need to apply for a business visa. That work is going to carry its fruit later on because once you arrive in France, you'll be so much, uh, you'll be more prepared because all of that work that you've done in order to get uh, a visa, a carte de séjour, once you have hit, once you're on oh, here, yeah, your strategy is all set. It's very likely that a lot of the text that you've written, you might be able to reuse for a website. When you land in France, you're ready to hit the ground running because your business idea is very clear. And to me, I can see this, for instance, um, citizens from the UK before they, they used before Brexit, they could come and work in France anytime. They didn't need any paper. And sometimes people would come over and lose 
quite a bit of time because they weren't quite sure what they would be doing, a bit of this, a bit of that, or maybe a little bit of this plus this plus that. So it was a bit of a mess, so they would lose a few months. While now, because they've done, now that they are not as part of the U Europe and they also need to ask for a carte de séjour entrepreneur, they have to do the same work as someone from the US, business plan, financial plan, proofs of customers, and so on. When they land, they're so much, they know, they're much better prepared because all of this is done. So then you start working and you're pretty much ready to invoice your customers because you also done some of that network. If you're at home and you say to your ex-colleagues or network, I'm going to France and by the way, I'm also going to freelance. So if you ever fancy working with me, I'm open for work. Mm -hmm. You're quite likely to get a couple of contracts landing before you are in France. So that's also very useful. Yeah. And so the the misstep or the mistake is in the thinking that, oh, my gosh, there's so much work I have to do in preparation for this move abroad. Uh, should I really spend a lot of time or put a lot of effort into that and the strategy and the business plan? And your point is that it it is so valuable because it sets you up for success in the long run. Yes, it does. And it's like some of those things when you fall from France, you might feel, oh, I don't really see what the impact of this. It just feels so far away. But actually, uh, for some of the stuff you need for your visa, for instance, you need to look into your personal budget, your finances. Your project becomes so much clearer because if you look at your personal finances, you say, okay, how much would it cost me to rent a house in France? What would be my monthly cost of living? you get a very clear idea of what life is going to be in France or how much it's going to cost you. Same thing with your business finances. If you look into, okay, I need to generate that much income to renew my visa, that means I need to make so many sales, things become much clearer. So you are, it is scary when you reach that stage, it's like, <gasps> but it's also, you have very clear objectives. Say, okay, I can see how that's going to work. And when you arrive, you prepare mentally and your strategy is also clearer. So to me, that's really very neat and clean foundation to start from. Now, do you work with people who are already in France or do you work with people who are getting ready to move to France? And have you and, and what is the difference if you do work with both? Yeah, so I do both. Initially, I was doing more people who were from France. So they were here and they wanted to work. So that, that it's more about which kind of business do I go for? I want to register my business, can I do it now? Or I've had, I have a business, I'm not quite sure how to manage it, or I'm ready to, I think I need the different one, don't know what to do. So there's all those people who could be uh, from Europe or in France with the right visa card de séjour. And there's more people now from outside of Europe preparing for future moves. So those is more, that's why it's more like six months to 12 months where it's okay, we've decided to come to France. I also think I want to finance, but I'm not sure I'm not sure what, uh, not sure how, how it would work. And for those people that tend to work more, either like a one-off call for the power hour where I give them advice to just bust the uh, roadblocks so they've got a better idea. Or I have a one-to-one -one, uh, coaching, which is called My French Business, where it's an individual coaching where you have access to a course where we're going to be working through your business, your business plan, your financial plan, uh, the visa application, and preparing for, for France. And then we have one-to-one -one calls every other week. So with this one, it's more, okay, I'll, I know I want to come over, but I'm not quite sure how this is going to happen, or I want to be uh, having someone to talk to regularly so it feels more real. Because sometimes when you're on your own, you work all day, you come home, you look after the kids at the house, and it's like 9 p.m. and you think, that's about enough. Well, if you have that meeting regularly with someone, it links you to the country, and also it feels like, okay, I've got to speak to Valerie and better work. <laughs> yeah, accountability, accountability. And so when you, you know, see people, I've got a couple questions for you. I guess the, the, the first question I have for you is you talk about that it takes more time to get situated than you anticipate. And that is something that people don't plan for um, and that you advise to plan for. How much time, you know, somebody is considering moving to France and starting a business here, you know, with the visa process and with, you know, creating your business plan and all of that, how much time do you recommend that somebody allows before they say, okay, I'm going to, you know, move to France. I'm going to uh, apply for that visa. 
Uh, usually when I work with someone, the minimum amount is like we need three to four months. Three months is somebody who's going to work. They say, okay, I, I want to come in three months. I'm ready. I'm already freelance and I'm going to work super hard. Uh, but we want at least to have that four months where we're going to liaise together to build something that is feasible and strong. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's somebody who has something already going going on already this, who's already freelancing? Oh no, for months you don't necessarily freelance because a lot of people, some of them have had a business in the US, others it's a conversion. Okay. Um, and that's where the four months is nice because we actually think, okay, I've got several ideas, which one do you think would work best or is more transferable? And we talk about that, then we start structuring what could, what it could be in terms of services. So to me, somebody, it's like when I was working with financial entrepreneurs, we usually would say three to six months when you are the first time freelancer, that's what it takes for you to be ready to actually start financing and have a business. If it's like your first one, it takes that time in terms of reflection to get ready. Yes. Um, so yes. At least, at least yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Great. So, um, so what's the third? So what's the third? What did we say? So I think we said, uh, don't overcomplicate your business structure uh, when you come to France. Yeah. Um, Often when you prepare your project, you're looking for external advice, you might talk to an accountant, you might take to a lawyer, and sometimes they tend to recommend something that is super rigid, which could be nice in two, three years time, but short term, it's actually making your life harder. Uh, in France, we have different types of businesses, and to me, I see them as staircase. You just take the first step, the easiest one, and as your business grows, you take the next one and you grow up. But to actually start from the strongest, most rigid business start to go down, is going to be super stuff and super costly and also quite frustrating because it will be harder to understand taxes. So for instance, in France, we have the easiest business type, which is called the micro-entrepreneur, and that's a sole trader that gives you a first step into the French system. And with this one, is super easy because everything is done online and you're paying a fixed percentage of uh, social charges that goes towards your health and pension. Uh, and therefore, you know how much taxes you're going to pay so you've got that control about what's happening with your, act, your activity. You're settling down, you start to learn who does what, what you have to declare to them, you know how much to pay. So rather than being in a stressful situation, obviously it is complex because it's new, but at least you have some control and you can focus more on developing that new business of yours, focusing on servicing your, or serving your customers. And as your business grow, then maybe in a year's time you say, okay, let's look at my numbers. Is it time to move to the next one? And sometimes people get advice from a lawyer and they say, oh, I'll go for the equivalent of an American LLC or incorporation. And it's just so complex because you've got no idea of who does what in the French system that sometimes you end up holding, working harder for less money because you misunderstood your taxes. Mm -hmm. so to me, it's not easy. And especially, for instance, when you apply for a visa, it's usually a professor liberal like the one that you had. It's easier with a macro entrepreneur because um they don't need to get copies of the letters of incorporation and so on so it's faster to uh, faster to get and easier to set up yeah so keep it simple sweetie right <laughs> just give yourself some grace you know you're going to come over you're going to have to adapt to a new country you're going to have to keep working on your french if you come with a family or your other half you also have to support each other so there's already a lot for you to be doing if on top of this you chose something which was complex, this is even more stressful. So to me, I find even if you say, okay, after one year, I think I'm ready for the next one, great, move on to the next one. But at least in terms of a strategy for your visa, it's also good because the macro entrepreneur gives you proofs that will count towards your renewal. Uh, basically, the visa profession liberal is issued for one year. At the end, for, for that one year, then you have to say, okay, I've paid my taxes, I've paid my, I've, I have a health cover, my business is all set up and all those documents are be, going to be given to you through that simple business. Once you renew your visa, if you've been really doing really well, then, then after that, change the business structure and you've got one more year to make it good, to provide more proof. But don't change. Yeah, so start easy and don't change just before you renew your visa because then you won't have the documents needed to renew that visa. Yeah, I, I think that is really sound advice. That's something when I... Um, you helped me with my business plan. I had written the business plan and I had you look it over to see, you know, if it would, <laughs> it would um, 
it's cut not- mustard, whatever the whatever the expression is, if it was good enough. And you gave me some good pointers on that. And that was one of the pieces of advice you said that you definitely go in at the profession liberal with the profession liberal auto entrepreneur status and then you know once your business takes off you can switch um statuses and 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 go from there it's it's easier to do that than to get into something more complicated more complex and not do as well as you anticipated so i think that was wonderful a wonderful piece of advice you gave me yeah i think the Sometimes if, if you speak to your friend saying, oh, I'm moving to France, say, what, France? You can't make money in France. The, the, or if you heard about horror stories, it's because people went for something that was too complex. Mm-hmm. In, for me, the people I came across this year, we had trouble situation. It wasn't many. It was one or two. Wrong advice on the business setups, something too complex. They didn't understand the tax structure, so that made them into a tricky situation. Um, yeah, that's that's what I would say. Keep it easy. And usually, if that's what, for instance, uh, we are recording this in January, but for me, whenever we're reaching uh, November, December, January, I have a lot of calls with customers where we just say, okay, where do you stand? Is it time to move? Ari, I want you to have your feedback. Here are my numbers for last year. Here's what's coming. Do you think it's time to switch? And that's a, that's a good thing. I would say more like November, December, so if we, we can prepare, but at least it's a nice way to say, okay, it's looking good. Uh, uh, this afternoon, I had two like this, say, okay, Yes, it sounds like you're right. It sounds like it's the right time for you to look into something else. Let's look into others. No, do another year. So, so fine. So just do it as a yearly basis. Go with the flow of what you have. Push it as much as you want, as, as much as you can or you want. Then review every year whether uh, it's time to change. Yeah. You. Um, another question that came to my mind is what types of businesses do you work with? Uh, so there's a lot of people within the consultancy services. So whether they're um, marketing consultant, uh, community manager, PR, um, event management, uh, programmers, developers, 3D design. Then, then you have interior decorators or people who are more in the building trades. Uh, and then people who are more in the tourism sector as in uh, large properties being rent- rented or retreats where you have a mixture of a stay with a theme, which could be like yoga, health, golf, whatever. So there's a lot of consultancy work, which is to me the easiest one to start, uh, even within the wellness, wellness, whether it's Reiki or yoga. Then you have buy to resell, um, e-commerce, uh, manual trade, and then more like tourism. Yeah, so it, it ranges you know the gamut of 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 businesses that you help yeah yeah yeah. it's uh i I suppose it also depends from the age of people come across when you're younger people might go for consultancy work people who are in a pre-retirement or they want to work part-time for instance it'll also be a bit of consultancy work but a bit of uh, tourism like retreats and sometimes people are retired and just want a top-up income from some rental income or like mm-hmm. holiday needs to top up their income for the winter. Yeah, yeah, good. And I know um, that you have a a giveaway, um, a resource that helps people, you know, if they want to move to yeah. France and they, but they're not really sure what kind of business they could start. Uh, you have a resource that gives a list of, a, is it a hundred it's 100 business ideas to freelance in France, and that's based on hundreds of businesses registration I've done over the last uh, 15 years. So I do, uh, and basically I compile this list to give you an idea of what could be feasible. Because sometimes you have an idea, you're not quite sure it would work. The fact that you can see what others are doing, and it's not just Fran- it's not French citizen, it's what experts are doing in France. So it gives you an idea of everything that's feasible. And it also tells you which activities are regulated because in France, some activities are regulated. You can't do them or you need to be having your qualifications validated to, to in order to do them. Uh, so that tells you this. And together with the PDF, I've done like a small series. We have five emails that help you build on this as to which other ways can you have to find ideas, outlining your business project. I have a playbook to start helping you on this, which kind of business structures you go for and a recap of uh, the process uh, you'll have to go to. So at least you have the idea and then you can start 
thinking about it to see whether it's a good match uh, for you. Yeah, so thank you for that. And if you have that, I can put that in the description so that people can download it. Maria has this question. Hi, Valerie, thank you for this great information. I'm an entrepreneur who owns a marketing copywriting agency in the US. Do you also help your clients match with potential customers in France? Uh, do you mean, do I find new customers? <laughs> I, don't, I don't do that. Uh, in my group, for instance, I have a, um, once people have their business, when they're micro entrepreneur, I also have a course called Manage Your Micro Entrepreneur, where people join in, so they got my support for a year to manage their business and they have access to the course showing you them what to do. So in the, we meet once a month for a live call. In there, there are people who can see they will work well together or will match. There's a lot of uh, creative mm -hmm. people. So that's one way to find customers, but I don't help people find their customers. Is that's what you were thinking of. But in terms of your skills, Maria, definitely marketing, copywriting agency. That's the kind of activities that are are um, very easy to create in France and are easy to use for a visa application because you've got the experience as having worked at home and that's transfer transferable uh, quite easily because you've got that proof of doing it. And really, you don't necessarily, I think what the, what the misconception is, is that you need to find all your customers in France. You can also come over to France with customers from the US. That's very acceptable because you're showing you're going to have some income already. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Maria, if, uh, hopefully that answers your question. There's a networking component that, that um, is possible in uh, Valerie's program. So, yeah. Yeah, so Maria says, um, I found it a bit challenging to connect with French entrepreneurs. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, once you're here, it's easier to connect because at least there's a lot of what they call the uh, apéro entrepreneur and co-working spaces where you can go for a drink and meet up and they usually have speakers talk, talk, talking about specific topics. That's great. And you also have female entrepreneur networks that they're going to have. But coming over with your current uh, customers or uh, premises or potential customer or letters of intention is a great way to start. Yeah, yeah. And I am in a small village and we have a business incubator here <laughs> that serves the, the, my region. And we have those, those apparels, we have those conferences where there are people who, who, makes, uh, who speak and it's a great way to connect. So if in, in my area, there is something like that, if you're going to a bigger area like Paris or Nice, um, definitely there will be opportunity to network. Yeah, and there's a lot of places like called like you have the co-working places and we have what we call Tierlieu, which is like a third place. And the Tierlieu is very fun because it's a mixture of you have entrepreneurs, you have researchers, and you have creative people. And for instance, in Bordeaux, you have the Darwin Project. And it's like a former plant that was rehabilitated as a business place where you have artists and you have entrepreneurs and, and they're quite boring places to 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 go to. They're quite fun. Even sometimes when you work from home and you want to change atmosphere, you rent an office there for the day, you've got nice foods, that's great. But I think one other what, thing what is, is it, what is it what is it called? Darwin, like Darwin, D-A-R-W-I-N. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Great. I love that place. And you have a skate park and art tagged everywhere. So they're quite fun. And they're called, it's, it's called Tiers Lieu, like third place in France. It mm. tends to be quite, uh, it's starting to be more popular. It's when in a town they might have a derelict place, like in Paris, they had a former hospital that has been turned into one of those places. And they're usually good to go and work. Uh, to go and work. Uh, what I was going to say for Marie as well is that when you come to France, from abroad, it's very likely that actually your customers aren't going to be French. Your ideal customers are going to be um, large. It could be, it could still be a US customers. We said that, but it could also be uh, international companies in France or in Europe looking for uh, somebody with writing skills. It could be other expats needing your skills. And it's much harder to get the French customers because you never get to that level in terms of language. And also in terms of networking, I like the idea of I'm going to go to um, a networking event for French entrepreneurs. So it works on my French. I also make those connections. So for instance, they might introduce me to an accountant, uh, to an insurer company or other women entrepreneurs, which is always fun because you have people you can go and see. And also to create your own 
business network with people within your field and not limited to France, because at least you keep you keep motivated, you keep developing your skills and your network in your field, which can lead in other customers. And to me, you need a bit of both, because if you just rely on a French network, at some point you feel a bit subdued because you don't have the, the professional skills. Uh, for instance, I used to be long tour and I helped create a network for French entrepreneurs where I am, for, for female entrepreneurs, sorry. Uh, and I was going there, but it was, it was my wish to just help other women entrepreneurs and promote female entrepreneurs. But I wasn't going to get there for feedback on work. For that, I create another group of female entrepreneurs where we just talk about business. And then if I talk about English stuff, I might talk to other people. So you have to have those mix of different networks. So it, it plays on all, all areas for you. Yeah, yeah. Great. So um, you can learn more uh, about Valerie's business. I put her website on the screen. Um, moving on to, is it number four? Are we up to number yeah, four already? Number four. What is really right? Because I tried to read my notes when we talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it was um, feeling like you need to be in a hurry. You mm -hmm. learn, I feel it's, it's been funny because I have a few calls with customers. Valerie, I'm at the airport, I've just landed. I want to register my business. So, okay, okay, we'll slow down. You, you, you can just relax and it's gonna take uh, it's gonna take a longer time, especially France has a slower pace. So when you register your business, you get postal mail, not email. So just 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 know that um, once you land in France, you're going to be focusing more on uh, recording your visa with the prefecture, uh, adapting to your the flat that you've rented, so setting up your phone, your personal banking, and then you focus on your business. But there's going to be a bit, little bit of a, a lap time where we're kind of waiting to register the business so you have the official address. And when you do, the paperwork for the business will take some time. At least you can work, so focus on serving your customers but the admin side is going to be slow. And whenever there's some, again, same thing is there might be some potential issues. It takes long, longer term to, um, it's, you fix it, but it's just slow. Yeah. So once somebody applies for the visa, they get the visa, then what they do, they need to set up they need to register the business in France. And so that's one of the first things they think they, they want to do yeah. or they need to do. Yeah. And your recommendation is? Uh, have your home address first, because mm -hmm. that's what in France, if you don't have a home address, you nobody. You can open a personal bank account, you can open a business. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the first step is to find a place where you're staying, look with the prefecture for your visa, mm -hmm. and then we look into the business. And also an important point is, uh, many of you, when you're coming to France initially, you might have rented uh, a property or through an Airbnb for a couple of months, and you're very likely to move shortly after that. So what's very important in that case, if you know you're going to move several times or you may not stay in that region, is to set up a PO box before you register the business so that at least the business address remains the same. And then you will just keep updating the PO box company as to where you moved. But once we register a business, just know that a lot of very important papers will arrive, especially about your health cover. And if in between you move the house and we need to change your address, it becomes a mess for the health cover. So to me, we want to have the business address is going to be something stable. So where are you going to stay at least four months? So that because the final, in terms of health cover in France, you have the business, they give you a temporary health cover number. They check your ID, they give you a permanent French social security number, then you've got a, a green card to say that you can go and do, you can go and do all your health cover. We don't, that health cover is super important and we don't want to mess it up. So if you think I'm just here for one month or two months or three months, maybe set up a PO box for the business. So at least the business looks stable, never changes. You just keep updating that company and it doesn't mess up your health cover. The, the mess up I've seen sometimes where people after one year haven't sorted the health cover is because they moved, they didn't realize, they haven't updated your address, or they missed some mail. And if the health cover doesn't receive the paper, they're not going to chase you. They're just going to leave it piling up. <laughs> so I would say that's uh, that's an important one to pay attention to. You know, in a hurry, just say where you want to stay uh, for the long term, or at least for six months, or look into the peer box. 
Yeah, that's good. That's good to know that, yeah, if you need to have a stable address so that you can get the papers, you can get your your health insurance, your carte vital coming through so that then you're covered and then it's smooth sailing from there. Yeah. 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 And that's an important one again for the visa renewal. So. Yeah, good, good. Um, so don't be in a hurry. <laughs> don't be in a hurry or expect to slow down once you arrive in France. I know that Sometimes when you at the earlier stage of your project, you think, oh, that would be nice to have a slower pace of life. And when you are actually in the business and you, you keep chasing people or the customer service isn't great, you're not used to it. So there can be a shock to the system or it can be frustrating. Just take it as that's the way life is in France. It's slower. It might take you longer. And you're, not, you're never going to get penalty fees about it. If, if it's their fault, I, mean, I know that, for instance, a lot of people they want to learn, they want to have their business, and they want to start paying taxes. Yeah, we don't pay taxes straight away. I know we've said that France, you have to pay taxes, but you might have to choose to chosen to pay on a monthly or the quarterly basis. And we we need that social security number to be ready, which means in the meantime, declare nothing. You're not gonna get penalty fees, it's not gonna mess everything up, it's just they know about it. If you're brand new to the system, they expect it to take longer. And when it becomes active, then you might declare one or two, three months together. But again, that's slow. And for people who've been told for six months, visa, be official, pay taxes, like, it is difficult to say, I want to do it, but nobody lets me. So. <laughs> yeah, I think it, you, you bring up a really good point about how people want to move to France or to Europe because there's a slower pace of life than in the US or some other countries. And we, Americans, it can be conditioned to just go, go, do, do, accomplish, accomplish, be in a rush so that once you are finally in a place where things are slower and the administration or whatever it is that you're dealing with seems to be slower, it can be so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> and a good example is the bank account. Uh, in France, we're very old fashioned for bank accounts. And earlier when I said, you are no one if you don't have a home address. You also are no one if you don't have a bank account. And as an American, to create a bank account, it's tough because we don't have the same banking regulations and it makes it difficult to, to open a bank account. And, and the process is going to be super slow because you're going to have to create a personal bank account with a, 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 brick, and a brick and mortar bank. Uh, and it's not like, oh, let's go online and create one. You're going to have to go to the agency and speak to the guy and he's going to want some documents and it's going to take three days to create it. So just know that that is slow and that is normal. If you go for a brick and mortar bank, we have to do this. And unfortunately, when you're new to France or new to Europe, you can't go straight away for an online bank because themselves, they want to prove that you have a brick and mortar bank because it's, um, it's a sign of stability uh, and mm -hmm. safety. So, so they want you to have a, a, a bank account with... So the, what I call brick and mortar bank are the old fashioned banks, so Crédit Agricole, Crédit Mutuel, CIC. Uh, they want you to have a, a personal bank account with them and then might open another one for your business online, but you, you won't go that straight away for online. So just know that for that. Uh, in in uh, the well, earlier, I was talking about the course, my French business. Uh, at the end of the course, there's a module for when you are land in France. And I call them missions, your missions when you're in France, because your mission is not to create your business, is to get a permanent, get a rent a place and have a home address, go and open a personal bank account. And that is a mission in itself because it, it, it is tougher than uh, it seems it's just time consuming. Yeah. And the thing for me that I struggled with for a long time was the justificative domicile because yeah. I was renting a, an Airbnb sort of residence where I wasn't, I didn't have the electric bill to prove that I live there. And everything you need from a cell phone to the bank to whatever, you need this justificative domicile. Yeah. Finally, I got renter's insurance and that worked for me. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I exist. <laughs> yeah. well, if you rent, so um, yeah, so Airbnb might be more tricky. If you rent a furnished place uh, through an agency, to me, I think renting a place through uh, uh, an agency is easier because then they're used to getting to deal with the paperwork and they're also used for the expat to see other ways to get you the place rented. 
but what you can also get, there's something called, uh, I don't think I can type it, but it's called uh, Kittans. And Kittans is just a document that shows that you have paid the rents. So again, that's one, something that, uh, or your rental contract or the, the attestation uh, that you're living somewhere helps. Kittans, Q-U-I-T-T-A-N-C-E. -T -T -E. Exactly. Oh, bravo. C'est bien. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. uh, uh, there's another one called attestation uh, d'hébergement and this one is also a proof that you are living somewhere and for instance this afternoon I was talking to some customers uh, and they were lucky to have in France uh, some relatives and friends so short term they're going to be staying with them so their friend or their family wrote attestation d'hébergement to say they are living with us. And to us, that's a proof that you are somewhere. So it makes it easier to open that bank account or to, to do other things. Yeah, great, great. So um, I think we are down to the last. Yeah, the last one. And the mistake. last one was keep time to work, uh, to work on your business. Because uh, as you mentioned, um, there's a bit of administrative work to do once you're in business, but there's also... Uh, you also need time to do some looking for your customers. Uh, you, uh, and I think when you when you land in France, what you don't expect is actually you're going to have so many distractions because you're going to want to visit. Your friends know you in France. So your house is going to be full the full summer. If you have kids, we have loads of holidays. So your kids would be more here more often than expected and you have to look after them and do your work. So to me, there's working in your business when you're serving your customers and there's working on your business where you learn to manage that new business of yours, look at what you need to do with your invoicing, which kind of bookkeeping you need to do, opening that bank account. Uh, and for this, I would tend to recommend initially just book one hour per week. So one hour per week, you sit down, look at what you need to be doing. So you keep doing little bits by little bits, a bit like a meal for a cake, you keep adding a layer. Mm -hmm. And also keep some time to do some, whether you call it prospection or marketing, but keep some time to keep looking for the customers because you're going to be busy with so many things. If you don't keep working on your marketing, you might dry out of work and then you're losing three months to just launch the machine again. Uh, and sometimes some of my customers, when they say, when they go for dinner parties, they say, I'm moving to France and they don't talk about the rest. They're moving to France and you're freelancing. I'm going to France and I'm going to go freelancing. Oh, are you? What are you going to do? Well, actually, I'm going to do the same. I'll be a copywriter, but from France. Uh, if you know companies or if you're looking for those kind of services, I'm still open for business. So you start, people think, all oh, right, she is still working. She's just not going to eat baguettes all day and croissants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and it's the same when I was working with French entrepreneurs. Uh, and the time people I was working with, they, they tended to be in between jobs. So they used to say, oh, I'm unemployed. No, you're not an employee. You're working on a business project. What do you think we've been doing for four weeks? We, we've been working on this. So whenever you go out, say, what are you doing? Well, actually, I'm working on a business project. I'm thinking of doing this. Come, And even if it's not now, because sometimes you say, well, how can I talk about it if in six months' time? Just say, well, I'm moving to France in six months' time and I'm thinking about freelancing as a community manager. Okay, yeah. she'll be doing this. She might be open for business. So, all right, which kind of uh, community management skills work do you do that opens up a discussion more on the work than just on the France? Yes. And it, so it's a, it's a great way to kind of get the conversation started around what you're doing, who you help, because I think that that is a big piece of, of starting a business and being successful is getting the word out. Yeah. And also, I think there's an element of doing the research, the market research ahead of time that helps to you to populate your business plan so that you have a strong path forward. Yeah, and just know that your customers can come from anywhere. They don't have to come from France. They can be from the US, from Shanghai, from South Africa. It doesn't matter. So, And it's more, usually it tends to be more likely at least to start with when you launch your activity that those first customers are going to come from your previous professional network. So the more you talk about it, or even if you go to events, you're gonna you put more opportunities to probably get some contract to start with. Yeah. Yeah. Um thank you. I think that's a really good point too. I have a question. And if you have questions, now is the time to ask because Valerie is a wealth of information and she is here to answer your questions. My question is, is it hard, you know, you recommend going for the auto-entrepreneur 
um, status at first, um, if, especially if you're just getting started. Is it hard to get approved for a visa with uh, that kind of status? Uh, professor liberal, for, if you go for the professor liberal, which is the one year visa um, where you don't need to have a specific qualification, or you don't need to invest money in the business, mm -hmm. to me, it's like a perfect match. Macro entrepreneur and professor liberal go really well together because it, it is that uh, simplicity that we talked about mm -hmm. uh, the simplicity of setting it up for them, the ticking boxes, okay. So for now, or um, freelancer, micro entrepreneur, easy. I don't need to check more documents. So that to me, that's the easiest one mm -hmm. uh, to go for. Um, I would say yes. That's just just easier to to start with. Yeah. Uh, so, that's the, so, so that's not. So that's the easiest one to go for. If you go for a different kind of business structure, then that's where the complexity might come in. It, yeah. Uh, it, well, for the visa, for the visa, professor liberal, the the. Um, The business structure won't matter too much, but as soon as you have an incorporated business, they want letters of incorporation. And as we yeah, mentioned before, yeah. mm -hmm. French incorporated business, we need a bank account and you can't have it from the US. So we kind of going around in circles. It's like yeah. we, can't, we can't add it. And for professional liberal, usually they don't look that much in details. But if you go for visa talent, which is the one where you need to have a master's degree and you need to invest 30,000 in a business, This one, they're like a bank manager that really checks. <laughs> you know, right, show me, you said money. I want to see the money in a French bank account. Like I want to see that 30,000 in a French bank account, which is tricky as an American. I want to see the letters of incorporation. I want to see that business registry. And you think, well, I'm not there. How do you want me to give you this? That's a bit of a tough one. That's what to me I tend to say, especially if you are within providing more like consultancy services or you are in wellness or if you're a sport teacher, profession liberal, micro entrepreneur, easy peasy, keep it simple for yourself. Um, I would say the other one, the visa talent would be more for someone who already had a footstep in France. So for instance, uh, you've lived in France before, you already have a bank account, that makes it easier or you have a home in France and that makes it easier as well because at least you'll be able to prove I own a whole, uh, we don't need to own a France, but you have a bank account. So if they want you to show the money in France, at least you have the damn bank account to show the money. But just know that if you go for those type of business or yeah, visa talent, they will want proofs of everything. So if you say you're going to buy a camping site, they will want to see the, not just the signed contract to say you've bought it. They want to see the time scale where you actually own the place. So for instance, I've had a case from someone, let's say you buy a big property and you're going to run retreats. And you're going to say, okay, I'm buying this property. I've signed the, the promise, like compromis de vente. In three months' time, I will be the owner. But when you apply, you're still on the compromis. Well, it's just, it's not officially the owner. They'll say no, because officially you're not the owner. If something happens and yeah. they give you the visa, you can't work. So they want yeah. you to basically own the place, which makes it tricky. Really. You need to own the place before you can. So we're talking about heavier investment. Uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So. so Yeah, and I will say from my own experience, what you what you're saying, you know, I did my business plan, I applied, and it seemed to be pretty straightforward and easy for me to get. So I echo what you say. Uh, you had a very clear. I think what, what from what I remember, your business plan was very good, and you also you had a very clear strategy as to okay. I've said I'm going to be making so much. This is my strategy to get my customers. That's what they like to see because mm -hmm. um, sometimes when people transfer skills or it's something new, they, they can accept that it's new. That's fine. But in that case, they want to say, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing to achieve that turnover. I'm going to go to those events. I'm going to be doing those webinars. I'm going to be networking with these people. So therefore, I know I'm, and that's what they, what they want, reinsurance, yeah. that you got a very clear idea of how to yeah. reach that turnover or maybe have letters from potential customers to say, okay, yeah. I'm not there yet, but also already have a couple of customers who are ready to follow me. Uh, that's also very reassuring for them. They love that. Yeah, yeah. We've got a question from um, Junqueta3000. Um, what do you suggest for someone who wants to change from a long stay to a micro-entrepreneur visa? So, are you, uh, so I guess you're on a visitor visa? So we don't, there's no visa micro-entrepreneur. It's profession liberal, 
Um, and in that case, if you came over to France as a tourist, unfortunately, you need to or you need to renew that visa twice before you can switch. And I've had a few cases last year where, uh, for instance, I had an Australian customer who had been in France twice. Oh, no, he'd been in France. He had a long, uh, he had a visitor visa, but he had been he had renewed it twice already in France. When he came to me, he said, Valerie, I'm ready to be. I want to freelance here now, so I want to switch. And he's one of those guys who said, right, I want it done. If it was June, uh, mid-June, or and he said, I want it to be done by September. And he just worked pretty hard. And basically for the switch, when you've been here for two years and you renewed it, you can ask for the switch directly to the prefecture. And at that point, they will treat you as a first entrepreneur. So you need the business plan, the financial plan, uh, the, the potential customers. That's how they would that's how they would validate the fact that you can switch from a long stay visitor visa to uh, profession liberal, for instance, for, uh, for for to work as a micro entrepreneur. The two years, or if you're a student studying in France, you need to graduate. Once you graduate, they give you the uh, you have the ability to work as an employee or freelance. And in that case, you start your business once you grad graduated. And then when we come to the end of your visa because it needs renewing, we would switch from student visa to visa profession liberal. Mm -hmm. Junquette um, 3000, does that answer your question? Um, because it means, unfortunately, if you haven't renewed it twice, it means you have to go home in order to apply for one of the visas we talked about. Mm -hmm. And I actually did go back to, I had renewed twice, but I actually went back to the States yeah. too, because the recommendation was, well, it's probably going to be faster. You know, I was kind of like ready to have this. Probably gonna be faster if I went back to the states. And yeah, the feedback. I think the the feedback that uh, I get for some visa experts is also that the switch isn't so easy. Um, that's why they recommend to maybe go home mm -hmm. because you you're starting from French, where the French where the French prefecture might be tougher. In the example I had last year, it's people who had been freelancing abroad. So basically, we were kind of they were kind of saying, okay, I freelance abroad. And now I'm going to freelance in France, so I know I can make this uh, activity work. But what was tricky was to say, well, actually, I've been in France for <laughs> two years and working, and now I want to bring the business. That was a bit tricky to say. I was here as a visitor, but actually I was working and invoicing from abroad. But that went that went smooth. So yeah. Good, good. That's a good question. Thank you, Junquette3000, um, for asking that. So, Valerie, we are... At the end of our time, I think this has been really interesting information. Is there anything else you'd like to share um, about starting a business in France? And also, how can people get in touch with you if they're interested in learning more or working with you? Okay, so first of all, I would say that some of the stuff we talked about might sound scary, especially if you're at the start of your project, it can feel being like a bit overwhelming. But basically, as you start working on it, the more you hear about those terms, it becomes manageable. And when you think about France, France has changed a lot over the last uh, 15 years. We used to be a nation where entrepreneurship wasn't such a big deal. It was more just loads of small businesses. But since the launch of the Macro Entrepreneur in 2009, uh, it's become much easier. Even for us French people, it's become much easier to freelance. And France has become more of a freelance nation as well where younger people want to go in to create their own businesses. Uh, uh, and so the culture is definitely there and moving with uh, it's more of a culture of freelancers and happy people uh, work for themselves. And it is manageable, even with limited French. I recommend that you work on it, but managing a business like a macro entrepreneur with limited French is feasible because it's online. So just a word of reassurance. Uh, the, first, the first time you talk about it is always tough but as you start hearing terms and seeing what they refer to, uh, then you become more comfortable and your job is more to focus on the business side, write down those technical questions which are tough and then go and look for advice because in one hour, somebody's gonna answer most of the stuff that keeps you awake at night, they're gonna clear it out for you and then you can go back to focusing to your area of skill and what you're good at and then you can keep moving forward. So that's what I wanted to say to find Thank out you. a chat. And if you want to get in touch with me, so you have my uh, website, startbusinessinfrance.com, and then I'm on most uh, social media platforms, 
I spend more time on Instagram. My um, it's at Stodbiz France on YouTube. It's the handle at Stodbiz France. Uh, also on LinkedIn, Valerie Essence. That's where I spend most of my time. I'm on Facebook, but not so available on the chat. Um, so Instagram, Instagram is the place for it to. Yeah, chat is Instagram and LinkedIn, and for, I produce a lot of content through my blog and on my YouTube channel. So if you want to hear more about how to run a business, YouTube is is nicer because it's like a longer longer content, so you can learn to you can start to digest some of the stuff. And the blog has well some topics you need to read or to watch longer videos, where the social network is more like chit chat, get in touch, uh, and questions. I also have a live every Friday. On Instagram, I take live questions for half an hour. It's French time. It's 12 o'clock French time, so it might be pretty early for you. <laughs> so that's where you'll find me. Yeah, great. Thank you. And can you, will you be able to give me the, the link to the yeah. 100? Because I think that is a, a great that's resource for people. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. I'll send you a link. You can add it in the comments. Uh, but that gets you started and thinking about it in a simple way. Because that, the idea with my business is I talk about business, but I try to make it in uh, plain English. Today is a bit of a condensed thing, but <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah, great. Well, thank you once again, Valerie, for joining me today. Um, this has been really helpful, very insightful. And I want to, you know, if you are interested in making a move, to France and you want to start a business, I highly recommend Valerie. Um, she knows her stuff. She's really good with that. And if you want some help with the mindset, you know, we talked in the beginning of, of this conversation about how there's so much going on, there's so much change, and it's important to give yourself that time to adjust. Um, if you need help with the overwhelm or with the uncertainty or finding that confidence and courage to actually create a business plan and start a business in France. And I'd love to have a conversation to help you move through that so that you can make this dream that you have of living in France um, a reality and move through that, that stuff and not feel like you're alone. And so if that's the case, I'd love to have a conversation with you. You can do that by going to thecouragecatalyst.com uh, forward slash future expat and schedule a complimentary discovery call with me. And we can talk about, you know, where you are, where you want to be, what things might be holding you back. And we can decide together if our working together makes sense. I've got two different programs. One is a group coaching and mentoring program for single women who are ready to make the move abroad, but not want to feel like they're doing it all alone. And then I have one-on-one -on -one coaching to help um, as well. So uh, thecouragecatalyst.com, future expat. And I look forward to speaking with you soon. Okay. Um, this has been a wonderful conversation. Oh, you're welcome, uh, Junket to 3000. It's been a lovely conversation, uh, great questions, um, great information. And um, definitely reach out to Valerie if you are planning to start a business in France. All right, I will see you next week. Oh, there's there's another live stream next week. I am going to be talking to Giovanna Mayris, and she's going to talk about five reasons why you should be teaching abroad. Now, that's a good way to good business idea. Yes, yes. So um, next uh, next week, it's going to be a little bit early because she is in Brunei, but um, definitely uh, tune in for that. So thank you once again for joining live. If you're watching the replay, thank you for watching. And I will see you guys next time. Take care. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Au revoir. <laughs>